Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my lighting is not so good. Um, it's night time and uh, I'm really trying to find an angle. Um, but the Lord has just asked me to go live and uh, share this word. So my hope is that you listen more to the voice than anything else and um, hear the voice of the Lord. Amos in um, uh, the Bible says that the lion, when the lion of Judah uh, roars, who can but prophesy? So when the Lord speaks, indeed we have to speak. Now the Lord is giving me a word and he has, has just been laying this word very heavily on my heart. The danger with the false prophets that are emerging, who we were warned about by the way in the word of God, is that it's a setup to make people very cynical about the true men and women of God. So their work, their purpose is really to cause people to be cynical. So that then anytime you hear pastors or whatever it is or ministers of the gospel, you are cynical about it and you fail to receive from the Lord. The Lord is warning that as a result of lacking discernment, when he sends his true servants and he says they will not look like what you expect them to look like. When he sends his true servants, because many are emerging from the cave, entering prophets of God true leaders and revivalists are being sent by the Lord. When we dishonor them as nations, the Lord is warning that judgment will come because of killing the prophets. Ignorance is no defense. Claiming that there was so and so is no defense. And so we must take the stand of uh, Gamaliel, the teacher, where we declare, if this is of the Lord, let it thrive, let it grow, let it be amazing. But if this is not of the Lord, then let it die. And that becomes a true test. Quite a number of false prophets have truly emerged. Major, major movements that sadly a lot of people still cannot see what's wrong with them. People who are selling the blood of Jesus Christ, selling anointing oil, selling prayers, and things that are contrary to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he left us with. The trouble is we are too blind. We are also too lazy to read the word of God for ourselves and to enter the prayer closet and cultivate a culture where we know the spirit of God and we're able to tell what is contrary. Well, the Lord is saying that when he sends the true prophets, when he sends his true servants, and if the people in your nation reject them, if the people in your city reject them, if the people in your family reject them, if you reject them, you will be found guilty of killing the prophets. You know what the Bible talks about when you kill the servant of God, when you kill the prophet. In the end times, the Lord is saying that, uh, you know, the killing of the prophets is not going to be, you know, stoning them and all that. It's just going to be shutting them down. It's going to be defaming them. It's going to be dishonoring them. It's going to be refusing to listen to the word and in that way, discouraging men and women of God. Some time back, the Lord gave me a word for a nation I will not name. And I was delivering a word to a man who was at the time living in that nation, but he was not a member, he was not a citizen of that nation, and I knew that. And I told that man that God's going to use you in this nation. The man said, no, I'm leaving this nation. And the man was so emphatic, and I said, no, listen, you're not listening to me. The Lord wants to use you in this nation. He said, no, I am living. And by this time, I will have left. Typically, when you have a true man or woman of God, they will never really tell you what exactly happened. But you can hear the pain in the voice. And I shudder for such nations. If the Lord sends you to a city or the Lord... Sorry, I don't know why the broadcast was, 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 was posed. But when the Lord sends you to a nation, when the Lord sends you to a city, typically one of the things the Lord tells me is, you know, as I'm pressing in, as I'm asking the Lord to open the way, as I'm asking the Lord to raise up the believers in the land to receive what the Lord has given me. Sometimes I reach the place where I shudder when the place is not opening. And I beg the Lord and I say, Father, do not let judgment fall. Because typically when the Lord sends his true servants, when the Lord sends his true revivalists, when the Lord sends the true anointed ones of the Lord, it is God himself who is visiting you. Because that we are just bearers of the anointing and the glory of God. But when you fail to discern, 
when you fail to see, when you fall for the traps of the enemy of competition and funny, funny behaviors and all that kind of thing. And that move of God moves. What happens is what Jesus was saying. When he looked at Jerusalem and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, may you not miss your time of visitation. What was he talking about? Because he was the truest and the greatest and the mightiest of all. For he is God himself. And he was visiting Jerusalem. But they missed it. And what happened as a result? The Jews have continued, yes, to be blessed. But they have continued to miss out on the glory of God. They've continued to miss out as many of us keep going to their nation to see the move of God. I remember being in Israel and weeping because I could not believe that they have all these places that have such an open heaven above them and yet they don't believe that the Savior came. That is what happens when you miss out on the glory of God. Discern indeed and discern. But let me tell you, make sure that when you reject, it is the Lord who has told you to reject. You would rather withhold whatever you say. You'd rather say, Father, give us time. You'd rather say, Father, show us the truth. You'd rather hold hands with others and call on the Lord. But what typically happens is that if you reject the true prophets of God, if you reject the true servants of God, if you reject the true strangers that visit you like Abraham was visited, but you reject them and fail to recognize that they are true strangers, if you reject the strangers that the Lord sent even to Lot who turned out to be the angels of God then you miss out on your visitation and what happens is that judgment falls judgment falls upon you the city of Sodom and Gomorrah missed out on the visitation they even wanted to rape the servants of God that had come who are the angels of God they missed out and we've all seen what happened. Everything perished. Animals, the people there, the, their, their livelihood, everything, including the land, was burnt to the ashes as hailstorms fell from above. I don't know if you know the story of Rwanda, but Rwanda in the 80s was the first one in the East African area to be visited by the glory of God. Two women fetching firewood, praying all the time, calling on God without knowing what they were praying about, being in the kitchen and lifting up of praise songs to the Lord. The spirit of the Lord God fell upon them and they ran out of the house because they were scared because of the glory of God. A lot of times we preach on revival, we talk about revival and some people stumble on revival, but if you're not prepared for revival, you will not know how to receive revival. So revival came as the Spirit of God came upon these two dear women. They ran outside and as, as fate would have it or as life would have it, unfortunately, they, the people that they met, they thought were the true servants of God. They met priests in a collar, Catholic priests, and they told them what had happened and they depended on them to know. But even those priests did not know. So the priests went and got holy water and they went to the, to the house and they exorcised the evil spirit. It was not an evil spirit. It was the spirit of the living God. In the spiritual realm, and I repeat this all the time, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is no defense. My people perish because of lack of knowledge, says the Lord. And because they reject knowledge, I have rejected them. May we never, ever, ever assume that the Spirit of God is something else. May we never fall victim into evicting the Spirit of God because we all know what went on to happen in Rwanda. The worst of atrocities went on to happen in Rwanda. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> the worst of atrocities went on to happen in Rwanda. That is what happens when we reject what has been sent to us. Every time that the Lord wants to release revival, we must understand that the Lord works as a double-edged sword. That's how the Lord works. He wants to release revival and it is a visitation. But if we fail to receive revival, what happens is that judgment falls upon a land. Whenever we reject the move of God, judgment falls upon a land. When I came back from USA, you may have noticed I was online, but then I reduced quite a bit of my being online. Why? I was grieving. I was grieving. My heart was grieving. And I didn't quite know why my heart was grieving. There was a part um, where my heart was grieving because the word of God was not fully accepted in some places. Because God still wanted to do so much more in some places. But the competition, the, the people feeling threatened and everything, you know, pastors and everything, feeling threatened and not embracing the fact that we are one. Feeling intimidated, not realizing that we are one. Nobody's trying to take the church from you. There are so many people out there who are not born 
again. We are not trying to scramble for souls within the church. We are getting the souls that are within the darkness realm and bringing them into the kingdom of God. But then again, depending on how you start your ministry, you will be afraid. The guilty are afraid. But in the midst of all that, the ship getting confused and everything, in some states, in some states, not in all states, but in some states, and in one particular state, which I will not name, it was very, very sad. And I came and I was grieving and grieving because I kept thinking, oh, if only you would realize, if only you'd realize. Jesus said, if only you would know to the Samaritan woman, if only you know who's asking you for a drink of water. And I'm not trying to say, oh, you know, um, whatever it is, or I'm not trying to lift myself up, but I do know who I am. I do know what I carry inside of myself. I do not know what the Lord, I do know what the Lord has sent me to release to the nations, to release to the cities. I have seen what happens with transformation when the word of God is received and when the message of the Lord is received. So I came back grieving. But as I grieved, there was something else. I knew I needed to forgive. I took time to take time and forgive. I took time to try and mend and reach out again. And those that did not accept, I took time to weep and grieve what could have been and yet we could not become. Hmm. Do I have sound, guys? I hope I have sound because I'm seeing one or two people saying they don't have sound. I hope I have sound. Father, just release that sound in the name of Jesus Christ. Release the sound, my King, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, that your word will not be stolen by the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. And, and, and so as I came back, part of what I was grieving, and I didn't realize what I was grieving, was also the revival movement in Kenya. That thank you so much, Modoni, for confirming. Thank you know, I was grieving and I didn't realize it until yesterday. As I was preaching last night in Glory Um uh Center uh International, uh the, the Mulemas Church, I was ministering last night and the glory of God came upon me. I was ministering about what revival is. The power of God came as a cloud. And as I was leaving that place, I remember I went back to my seat and I lay down flat prostrate before the Lord. And I you I, I didn't want to know anything and I was weeping before the Lord and I was saying what is it Holy Spirit why am I grieving why is my heart so heavy and the Holy Spirit said you have been distracted you have been distracted. You see, in revival, there's a lot of distractions that Satan will use. If he cannot succeed to use demons because you're alert, he will use people. He will use vessels. However, we must remain as people who are focused. As a revivalist, you must be focused on the prize. And it is ushering in the glory of God. Because we know that if this glory of God is not released upon our nation, the Lord has chosen Kenya. The Lord has chosen different nations of the world. Every nation that I step in, and I'm not no, I'm not the only one. The Lord has chosen that nation in particular for revival. So if at all that nation does not receive that revival, oh, my brethren, we need to tremble and shake because judgment will surely come upon that nation. Judgment will surely come upon that nation. So the Lord has asked me to release this word tonight and to warn the nations, warn the nations when the Lord has identified you for revival. May you not miss it. May you not miss it because you are choosing to be confused because others have come before. Others have come before that are confusing people. May we not miss it may we not miss it may we not miss it may we not be like the the, the the apostles who are walking on that road and Jesus walked amongst them and they did not even realize it was him and then they're asking him are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and then they began to ask themselves is you know when they finally their eyes were opened they started asking each other wasn't it like the, our hearts were burning when he was amongst us let us not look later on in retrospect and see what was it like oh it was moving and you know one of the things i realized that can be a trap from the enemy is when the glory of god is moving when the miracles still continue when people are still being baptized in the spirit when the presence of god is still moving and we get caught up in the gifts of god we get caught up in the blessings of god that are without repentance and we mistake it for the glory of god and yet we have missed out on the heart of jesus christ revival is the very heart of god revival is the very presence of god May we not, may we, may we be like Moses. 
<coughs> excuse me, may we be like Moses, who was told by the Lord, because of my promise to Abraham, because of who I am and my nature, I will keep my promise to Abraham and go on to the land flowing with milk and honey. That is a form of revival in itself. Moving to a land flowing with milk and honey. But then the Lord says, I will not go with you. May we not be the people who we flow with milk and honey because we are blessed, because of the blessings of the Lord, because of who God is, because of his presence. People are being healed. The glory of God seems to be moving, but his presence is not amongst us. May we desire like Moses to say and say, Lord, we will not leave this place until you go with us. It's not the miracles we want. It's not the, 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 the semblance of the glory. It's not the increase that we want. It's not the power that we want. It is you that we want, oh God, for only you are enough. That is the message that the Lord is giving us tonight. The Lord is looking for people who will mourn, a people who will groan until they see the glory of God. A people who will cry and say, show us your glory. Show us your glory. Lord, may we not miss our visitation. When you come to us, Father, when you come through a vessel, my God, may we not miss your visitation, my King. May we not miss your visitation. For if we miss the visitation of the Lord, judgment shall surely fall upon our nations. Just like Rwanda had a genocide. Just like Rwanda has never truly recovered. Right now, you know, they're in the process of saying, oh, you know, there are no tribes and everything. But Rwanda is just bubbling in the surface and we need to pray for Rwanda. It's bubbling in the surface. The resentment, the anger. Look at the shutdown of the churches. Over 20,000 churches have been shut down by their president. Is that not persecution? Is that not death? What does that mean to a nation? May some, may somebody in Rwanda fall before the Lord and weep and say, not again, not again, not again. For I see trouble brewing in Rwanda for killing the prophets of God. Starting to decide that people cannot fast for long. Who is this human being who can dare tell the people that you cannot fast for long? How long is long? If the Lord calls a fast, who is a human being that can stop us from getting into that fast? Oh, I see judgment coming. May somebody in Rwanda weep before the Lord. May somebody in Rwanda see the warning of the Lord and call on the name of the Lord. Even as the rest of Africa prays, you know there has to be somebody who is a remnant in the land. And if you know them, please invite them to be able to know that they need to weep and call on the name of the Lord. And pray, Father, in your judgment, remember mercy. In your judgment, remember mercy mercy. Father, forgive us. The Lord is looking for some Abigails who are going to run ahead, realizing that their president is a neighbor who is there, you know, bringing judgment to the entire nation. Yet again, the enemy is using another different vessel. Previously, he used priests and callers. Now he's using a president. Now he's using leaders who are daring to shut down the church of Jesus Christ. Oh, may somebody weep for Rwanda. May somebody weep for Rwanda. I want to prophesy about Nigeria as well because the spirit of the Lord is speaking about Nigeria. I've been on my the floor asking the Lord, Father, what's going on in Nigeria? Father, what is the root of this issue in Nigeria? Father, how do we pray for Nigeria? And the Lord said that he sent a revival in Nigeria. The Lord sent blessings in Nigeria. But so many false people came from there, went and planted churches and God raised them up as a nation. So many pastors that are Nigerians. But at the end of the day, they lost out on the anointing because you see sometimes the glory of God lives and instead of grieving and asking God why am I hurt? Why am I feeling discouraged? Why am I feeling empty? We get so caught up in filling the sanctuaries. We get so caught up in panicking about oh somebody might find out that the Lord's presence is missing. Somebody might find out and instead of pleading before the Lord instead of withdrawing before the Lord and weeping and saying spirit of God why are you grieved inside of me? We we get caught up in the miracles. We get caught up in trying to pretend. We get caught up in trying to act up what revival looks like. And that's what has happened to a lot of the pastors that God has sent out from Nigeria. They have introduced witchcraft. They have introduced illuminatism. They have introduced an end time, you know, deception, unfortunately. And unfortunately, what has happened is that the revival has lifted from their nation. And what has happened is that judgment has come. But the Lord is saying there's still a window of grace. There is, this is a shaking up of Nigeria. It's not judgment yet. It's a shaking up of Nigeria. And the Lord is asking will you move away from performances? Will you move away from pride? Will you move away from deception? Will you move away from making church a business? Will you move away and withdraw and retreat and seek my face that I may fall upon you one more time? Just like the Lord was speaking to me yesterday as I fell down flat on 
on the ground and I was weeping before the Lord. And this morning, by the way, when I woke up, I woke up with such joy. I woke up with such a lightness of spirit because the Spirit of God said, it's back, we are on track. It's back, we are on track. Sometimes we miss track, not in that we are sinning. Sometimes it's just that we get busy. Sometimes it's just that we get caught up in distractions. Sometimes it's that we get caught up in whatever it is that Satan will try and use. And oh my, Satan uses people. We will get caught up because of hurts. We will get caught up because of, you know, sin when it enters the church. We'll get caught up and you're walking in holiness. But still, your eyes have come off from the agenda of revival because revival is about by the way you hold on to something and you know that you're in a race I cannot faint, I cannot quit, I cannot rest it's like a mother whose baby has already engaged, to engage is when the head of the baby is ready to come out and you can see, at that point a mother cannot shut her legs and say I want to breathe a mother cannot say I need to stop, a mother cannot say it's time to eat, in revival and at the place where we are at. It's a place of bathing. At the place of bathing, there is no rest. At the place of bathing, the rest can only come as we wait upon the Lord. In the place of bathing, there is no time for civilian matters. In the place of bathing, there is no time for sideshows. In the place of bathing, Jesus must be king. In the place of bathing, the Lord must define that agenda moment by moment, section by section, time by time. Oh, beloved, may we not miss our time of visitation. The Lord loves us so much. The Lord loves us so much. We have a window to prepare for the return of the Messiah. It's a window of the glory of God. It's a window of the presence of God. It's a time of revival. Let's forget the civilian matters. We are not citizens of this earth. We are soldiers of God. We are not civilians. Do not get caught up in civilian matters. Do not get caught up in earthly things. Do not get caught up in sideshows because when Satan realizes that demons do not work anymore because you're able to recognize them and to deal with them. Satan will surely use human beings. Satan will surely use human beings. Satan will surely use circumstances. Satan will surely use all sorts of things, even sickness, distractions of every kind. Let us not get caught up in civilian matters. Let us not get caught up in civilian matters. It's time for revival, beloved. We have a window. We have a window. We have a window. Grace has been released and to all the nations. Grace has been released. If you will pray, the Lord will come in his glory. If you will pray, the Lord will come and he will bath his presence. If you will pray, the Lord will visit upon your nation. If you will pray, the Lord will release his revival everywhere. Pray, beloved. Pray, beloved. Do not faint. It's not time to faint. Do not get discouraged. It's not time to get discouraged. If you get discouraged, encourage yourself in the Lord. Keep getting up and moving. The beauty is, I've gotten to learn in this whole process that the Lord is more vested in this revival than even we are. And if our hearts are right, the Holy Spirit within us will let us know when we are missing out. We are soldiers. We are not little brats. We are not babies. We are soldiers. And whether you feel like it or not, whether you feel as though you are it or not, the Lord has identified you for revival. And everybody on this platform and everybody who receives my videos, everybody who receives the messages on this platform, you are marked for revival. You are marked for revival. But there some of you are not even born again, but you are marked for revival. Some of you are persecutors of Christ like Paul used to be, but you are marked for revival. May the Lord deliver you out of whatever you are in and may you join this army of the Lord for if we do not be loved we are doomed and judgment shall surely come and the Lord will release the other edge of the sword I'm not saying this to scare you and the Lord does not in any way threaten us but please let us be aware that when the Lord has not the, when the Lord is not allowed to have his place, surely, surely, ju judgment shall fall. But the Lord does not desire for us to be judged, even in our homes. Let us receive revival and let us involve our children. Let us bring our children into the place of prayer. There are times that my children are the ones who encourage me. There are times that my children are the ones who remind me of our word. There are times that my children are the ones who say, Mommy, let us call on the Lord. Teach the children. Teach the children. When one is weak, the other one will be strong and pull the other one up. 
and that includes the children. Let us birth this revival, beloved. Let's not get caught up by sideshows. Let's not get caught up by distractions. It's time to birth revival. We do not want judgment to fall on us, but even beyond judgment falling on us, we need Jesus so badly. The earth needs Jesus so badly. We need Jesus. The church needs to be ready. The final thing that the Lord was saying to me, that's the third word, preparation of the bride. Revival is part of preparation of the bride. And the Lord was telling me, do not speak against the church. The Lord was telling me, do not say, oh, the church, what have we become? Do not say anything that is negative about the church. And this is what the Lord said unto me, because I have been guilty of this myself when I get frustrated. The church is his bride. Anything else is not called the church. You know, we have places where they're called the church of Satan. And one of the things I look at is, surely can Satan be a bit more original? There cannot be church of Satan because there's no body of Christ of Satan because the church means the body of Christ. How do we prepare the bride for the return of Jesus Christ? We prophesy to the valley of dry bones. We prophesy to the bride. We refuse that the bride will be fooled. We refuse that the bride will be deceived. We stand as gatekeepers, as watchmen upon the walls. And in every nation we are saying, no, 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 to anything that is of darkness, to anything that is counterfeit. Trust me, by the way, even though you do not realize it, you have authority. You have authority. And for as long as you're receiving this video, as long as you're receiving this message, you are appointed for such a time as this. You are the Esther in your land. You are the Esther in your land. Some of you are the Mordecai's at the gate. But if you are the Esther in the land, as the Lord is saying, then we have to declare because we are on the front line because the Esthers are on the front line. The Mordecai's are in the back, back, background. But the Esthers are the ones that go forward. And we say, if we perish, let us perish. If we perish, let us perish. But we must show ourselves before the king and we must press in for the land because the time is now. It's not time to eat. It's not time to feast. It's time to call on the Lord. It's time to fast. It's time to pray. It's time to be counted and to stand up and be counted. We sang when we were children. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. We were prophesying the time is now. All soldiers of the Lord, come forward. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. You will not die. The Lord will use you instead. Call people. Gather together pockets. The Lord was speaking to me this afternoon about pockets of prayer. Pockets of prayer. Prayer pockets. Two, three. Stop discussing people. Stop you know, and by the way, it's such a dangerous thing for you to be intercessors. You're with your prayer partner and you're discussing people because that is the person you agree with on spiritual matters. You have authority, but you're agreeing on destroying people and you're destroying the church of Jesus Christ. Let us cry to God for love. Let us cry to God for forgiveness. Let us cry to God to help us also to forgive others and for us, for our words to be laced with the grace of God and to be tampered with the salt of Jesus Christ that we may be graceful that we may learn when to keep quiet, that we may learn when to pray, that we may not cast the church of Jesus Christ with our own lips because we are you being used by the enemy to cast the church of Jesus Christ, to cast the children of God, to cast those who the Lord has sent our way. May the Lord help us. Beloved, it's not easy, but the beauty is that we do not have to do it by ourselves. May you hear the call of God through this prophet of God. May you hear the call of God through this apostle of God. I have speak as sent by the Lord to speak speak to you, to plead with you, his dear bride of Jesus Christ. Arise, beloved. No more distractions. No more civilian matters. Let us focus on the things of God. Let us ask God for wisdom as we keep on going forward. And let us ask the Lord to help us to be fixed on him and our, our hearts may be stayed on him, regardless of what happens, that even if we feel like we are perishing, that we will not get distracted, but we will usher in this revival. God bless you wherever you are. I'm praying for you. Pray for me. Let's pray for one another. We may seem like we are few and far apart, but just like Elijah was told, he thought he was by himself, but there are many. We are not few. There are many, but what will bring them out? Our prayers. Our prayers will bring them out of the caves. Our prayers will bring them out of the fear. Our prayers will gather them together and the Lord will join us one 
one to another and the Lord will not allow us to faint. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to call on the Lord. God bless you so much. I love you so much. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to seek the Lord and let's allow the Lord to use us. He's done so much for us. Let's lay our lives down for him. He's done so much for us. Let's remember that. And when he asks us, when the son of man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Let's be the ones that say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For as long as I have breath on these lungs, he will, Lord. For as long as it's my season and my time, he will, Lord. For as long as I'm still living on this earth, he will, Lord. Father God, here I am, beaten down, but Father, I will call on you. Father God, here I am, wounded, but I will call on you. Father God, here I am, I don't fully understand, but I will call on you. Father God, I don't understand your ways, and in some things I feel maybe it might be unfair, but God, I will call on you, because it's not about me. I came to this world with nothing, and God, you owe me nothing. You owe me nothing. So I will lay my life down, Lord God, like the woman with an alabastron box. I will minister to you, oh God. I will love on you, Jesus, until your glory comes, until your presence falls, until Jesus is seen and manifested through many. And when the Lord begins to manifest through people, we will not compete because that's what we've been praying for. We'll be saying, thank you, Jesus, another one has manifested. Thank you, Jesus, another one has manifested. Thank you, Jesus, another one has been birthed. Glory be to the name of the Lord. It's time to unite, beloved, and it's time for us to take our positions. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. From Nairobi, Kenya, that is the word of the Lord. Please share it wildly. Share it wildly. I'm not saying widely. I'm saying wildly. As in share, share, share. Let someone insult you. Let somebody say whatever. But you'll have reached your network of 100. You've have reached your network of 600. You've have reached your network of 1,000. Let's cause this message to go out like bushfire. Because a number of people are understanding and hearing, but they don't understand fully what is happening. And when they receive this message, they'll then understand that groaning in their hearts. They'll then understand the grieving in their hearts. They'll then understand the release that the Lord wants to give into their hearts. Share it, share it, share it, and let it go out. And let's gather online, continue to gather online, and continue to gather also on, offline. And please raise up prayer pockets wherever you are. The Lord bless you. The Lord watch over you. May the Lord cover you with his blood and may the Lord's shield over you be a jealous one where you will know Jehovah Kana as you answer the call of God and as you take your position regardless of how inadequate you may feel God does not come to the qualified he qualifies those who he has called God bless you so much thank you for watching please share the video